Today I'm with Dr. John Mandrola. He's an electrophysiologist from Louisville, Kentucky, and many of you know him as a writer for the heart.org Medscape Cardiology. Dr. Mandrola, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Well, I wanted to ask you a few questions today really about how we best evaluate data as it comes down the pipeline with all these new trials. You know, what's your advice? How do we best evaluate new data from trials? Sure, for the first thing, Kevin, is what's the inclusion and exclusion criteria? Which patients are in these trials? Take a look at that. Then, second, look at the baseline characteristics of the two groups. Are the patients well matched? Did randomization do its job? Uh, third, in terms of the results, look at the results first, not the p-values, just look at the big picture. Which way is it going? And then, are the results not just statistically significant, but clinically significant? How do those results apply to the patient in front of you in the exam room? So how do you separate the wheat from the chaff? Because we're inundated with new information every single day, particularly at meetings like this one. Yeah, so good question. Here, here's the thing about uh, that. I think the biggest problem is the conclusions of these studies. So the results are one thing, but then so often there's a leap to make these giant conclusions. You see it most in observational trials. Association is not equal to causation. I think it's observational trials, there's so many of them, they're fine, but they're for making hypotheses to study further. So I think the main thing is to be careful about conclusions. Well, that, that, I mean, I think that's great advice. Uh, one of the things that troubles me sometimes, and I know you've been very vocal about, you know, why do so many people so quickly adopt poorly designed, often industry-sponsored trials that result in a lot of excess procedures or expensive drugs? Ah, you know, Kevin, look, we're electrophysiologists, so there's no way to do our job without high-tech stuff, mapping systems and devices and all this stuff. We need industry collaboration. That's critical. The, the issue, though, is that a reader and a clinician, we have to know about these collaborations. We have to face the facts that there are these interests, these conflicts, sometimes confluences of interest, and we have to be mindful of them. And uh, so, we, for instance, journal editors, journal editorialists, researchers, they have to be careful about what they say. And, and we have to understand that as a reader, their careful nature about that. They can't just you know, dive bomb their career. Um, and so just knowing about these um, uh, collaborations is important and managing the collaborations. And uh, I, I think it's fine and it, it, will be, it will be fine. So you've been a leader in social media for a long time. You've mentored me and got, uh, you know, helped bring me into the social media space. What do you see the role of Twitter and digital and social in discussing these types of trials? Yeah, so I was in a, a kind of a little bit of a confrontation <coughs> with some leaders in interventional cardiology recently about this very topic. I see social media, I understand there are negatives. Of course there are negatives. We heard about them in the plenary. But I think there's more uh, good than bad. For instance, I see wisdom in the crowds. So when you do a, a CP review, there's two or three people looking at this. Uh, they may be conflicted. But in social media, it's global, and there's hundreds, thousands of people looking at that, and I see that wisdom being filtered down or distilled down from that. Second thing is, I love social media because it's more of a meritocracy. Good ideas move up and gain influence, not because they came from a podium here, but because they're, they're worthy of the merit. And I, I love that about social media. I think that it's not perfect, but social media will enhance peer review and, and help science uh, move forward in the long run. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Great advice. It makes me want to get on Twitter and see what you have to say here at the meeting. So we'll all follow you at Dr. John M. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Okay.